So for everybody who's joining, uh, my name is Christian Karasevich, and normally I'm joined by Vincent Orlek, my uh, my co-host, but today I've got Jessica Phillips over here. Uh, she is with uh, Now Marketing Group, and she has agreed to step in uh, for this week's episode of Social Chatter. Basically, uh, I actually was at their conference last week. It's actually the shirt uh, for Social Media Week. It was Social Media Week uh, Lima. And, you know, we had a really great time talking a lot with, you know, you want to tell everybody about it. I think we had like, how many business owners were there? Yes, we had a little over 200, 216 uh, people that were in attendance. So it was a packed house. We were expecting uh, right around 200, ended up going over that and lots of different industries that were represented uh, from healthcare to education to government to small business owners to niche businesses um so a good a good variety of people in attendance as well yeah nice yeah i mean it was a lot of fun i mean it was uh it was really great you know teaching everybody about um about social media we talked a lot about you know, a lot about facebook a lot about twitter i think there were what some snapchat tutorials yep. uh, but it was really you know but the key thing i think the key takeaway was it's all about building relationships you know, and not just uh, not just saying, well, hey, I'm going to do social media. I'm going to put content out there. Um, I have to have a relationship with my my fans, my customers. Otherwise, I'm not going to really go beyond that, you know, basically beyond that circle. Exactly. And it was talking, uh, the theme of the conference was preparing your business for 2020 and talking about the things that you need to incorporate now. And not that you have to do everything, but find the things that are working for your business to build the best relationships. I yeah, I mean, and there were some really, it was some great insights shared. So, um, so I'd recommend, you know, if you haven't uh, checked out that conference, um, it's it's a great conference. Um, I enjoyed, you know, thank being you. a part of it. So, thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you for coming. So, um, I don't know if you've had, a, if you ever watched the Social Chatter show, but basically, mm -hmm. what we do is we basically bring in uh, three to five pieces of social media content from the week, and then we also talk about a couple of tools, and we try to, you know, we try to frame them in the perspective of uh, business. How can a business, you know, if it's a new feature, for instance, how might a business start using that? Um, if it's a tool, how might a business use that tool to get more out of their business or right. to make it easy to, you know, assist customers? Yeah. So um, today I actually, unfortunately, I have a, a fairly lengthy list of six That's all good uh, ones, though. Of <laughs> social media news that I think are very important this week. And I've got uh, my three tools as well, but um, I think I, I sent I think I sent you those, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we're going to actually start with the first one, and that's uh, it's the fact that Facebook. Uh, and by the way, they announced this last Friday, at, right after I did this. Uh, that's what I'm week. really excited about. Oh, I, I'm so excited! I was talking about this back in uh, April when they first announced live video. Yep. So the update is Facebook is rolling out two-person broadcasts and a really new uh, feature called a waiting room. Um, this is really, really, really awesome if I'm a business owner. Um, yes. what, do you, what do you think? What's your take on this, basically? I am super excited. One, uh, we everybody was excited about Blab, uh, first of all, because of just being able to collaborate with other people and mm -hmm. live stream together, because live streaming is, is huge, but it makes it easier to kind of bounce ideas back and forth when you have another person there. And you may want to do interviews just all of the all of the capabilities when you have multi-person capabilities within live streaming so first of all that was huge but we know and now know that blab is kind of not necessarily putting a huge focus on improving this product here so we've all been searching for an alternative and facebook as soon as they rolled out live streaming it was huge like everybody's you know using it and, and it's increasing our reach and it's just increasing just how much time you can connect with your customers online. So having another person live streaming with you is, mm -hmm. is definitely a huge benefit for business owners um, and people that like this kind of show style collaborating approach. But mm -hmm. then the waiting room is just that extra benefit. Because uh, I know the biggest piece with live streaming that people were kind of um, turning off from is that it takes a little bit, even like today, we had some technical you know, mm -hmm. issues getting started. So there's this time gap where nothing's happening on this live stream. So it takes a little while for you to grow your audience. But at the meantime, while you're kind of starting that stream and you're tr trying to work out the technical difficulties, you're losing some of that audience too. 
Um, so having you know the capability of doing it in a, in a waiting room style is, is really cool. And, and by the way, that's a, a really great point that you brought up there about the fact that you know we had some technical difficulties. Um, mm -hmm. I actually thought about that when I you know I got I tried to get on and and my issue was my laptop, for instance, would not pick up the right camera. It kept picking up, for instance, my laptop, but it wouldn't show my external mm -hmm. monitor. And as a result, I had to then you know, reposition my chair, adjust my chair height, you know, that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I did wonder, I was like, well, okay, um, Jessica, you know, she's here, she's on time and hey, I'm not, this doesn't look good, you know? And so um, I definitely agree that, you know, the waiting room is going to be a really cool feature. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also, you know, they've got, let's see, they've got the ability to broadcast with multiple people. I could see this, you know, I'm not sure how this is going to work for yeah. two person broadcast because um, I will, like, for instance, we're doing this right now from, you know, our, our, at least in this case, I'm from my branded channel and not my personal blab. Um, I think with, you know, with Facebook live, are we going to have then, you know, uh, you know, are they going to have a feature where like people can have their own little private, you know, live, live chats, or are they going to be doing it where like, Hey, this is, you know, now marketing group and social chefs, for instance, yeah, yeah. working together and Hey, I'm an affiliate of that company and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, I know they said they were rolling, rolling it out. out. Oh, I'm echoing. Can you, is it echoing now? No echo at all, actually. I hear it. Okay. That um, does happen sometimes with Blab. Yes. yes. <laughs> Not to knock I Blab, know. but. Yeah. yeah. I know they said they were going to do it with verified pages first. I'm wondering if they're going to do it with verified businesses as well at that kind of same rollout where you can collaborate together. And, um, I'm not sure how it's going to be positioned, if it's going to be individuals using it kind of for business, or if we're also going to see kind of the hangout approach where, you know, people are going to just be hanging out with others in that room, kind of like what we've seen on lab. They are right. introducing that MSR QB, which if you guys have ever seen that app or tried out that app, it's kind of hilarious. It's kind of like the Snapchat filters right? So you can, you know, put different masks on and that kind of thing. So I think it's going to add an extra level of, fun and humanness, I think, to the app itself. Um, I don't know how many people are going to use it. I know Google Hangouts had that a while back and not everybody used it, at least in the business environment, but it was available. Yeah. And by the way, so the MSQRD thing, that actually just rolled out a couple of days ago. Um, I was actually going to bring that up. That's a good point. Um, it's basically built into the app. So you've got MSQRD. You can now go live from MSQRD into uh, Facebook using Facebook Live yeah. because Facebook owns MSQRD. So yeah. it is, you know, that's that's I, actually good. No, go ahead. <laughs> I, was gonna, I, I mean, that's like super slick because, uh -huh. you know, I was out like I was out to dinner and we were, you know, I was showing the MSQRD app off to people and mm -hmm. they were like, I've never heard of this. And we were yeah. trying it at dinner and, and I don't think they realized it was recording. And so it was so awesome to have those conversations and you know, to have like the different you know, pieces or you know, to put yeah. on the beard or whatever else. Um, yeah. And it was so accurate, it was fun. very accurate. So it was really, you know, mm -hmm. it made it so much more engaging, so much more fun. Um, it is. I found that app before I found um, the Snapchat filters, actually, like before I realized like how you could do all that with the Snapchat filters. So I played around with that and my kids went crazy with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be really cool. I, I could see, for instance, if I were using Facebook Live with the two person feature, I could see like, you know, I know they have ones for sporting events. So I could see like, for instance, a soccer fan, like, you know, you're with one team and I'm with one team. And, like we both have, you know, our faces on, our game face on basically. Um, I could see being very useful for that. I would even be uh, interested to see if Facebook considered rolling out maybe a paid option. To, That's like, what I was thinking. Business. Like maybe yeah. I can, you know, maybe I can give myself a face yeah. tattoo or something. Exactly. With like, I, I would not put it past them because it's just, creative you know like you mm -hmm. know have coke in the picture or something for coca-cola or whatever mm -hmm. most sporting events definitely but almost like their geo filter but with you know those those little extra add-ons i definitely could see companies absolutely i mean and it could i mean it could even be almost like a i want to say it could almost yeah. be like a facebook ad in a way because even if you look at the trend you know the direction that everything is trending uh for example you know you have a lot of tv shows they're moving towards having uh, individuals on the show that are not celebrities, like, sorry, not, not your, you know, famous actors and actresses, but more like social media celebrities or people that are, you know, YouTube celebrities and so forth, like pulling those kinds of people into their, uh, you know, their shows. 
Facebook have, they rolled out though with like a show with Gordon Ramsay and a few others, like the chef to actually do live streaming television style shows Mm -hmm. on their pages. So I think Mm -hmm. we're just kind of touching the, like Uh, entering into this zone of a new way of media. Absolutely. This is going to be really cool. Um, Now, you know, I guess the only unfortunate side to this is people are going to have to wait. I think they're going to have to wait till the summer to be able to get this. Uh, as you mentioned, I think verified accounts um, and so forth, you know, verified accounts, celebrities, those types of uh, individuals are likely going to get it first. Um, I think that's good because, you know, it'll at least give people the ability or at least give Facebook the ability to test it out and see, you know, is that something that um, worked? How well does it work? How well is it received? And then um, after that, you know, start to roll it out to, you know, everyone else. So exactly. And it's just smart, you know, for them to roll it out to celebrities because everyone wants to see kind of who's behind that profile. And now you get to engage with your fan, uh, you know, and the celebrity and the same token in the, in the same spot. That's just going to just increase the visibility and the time that's been on the app itself. For sure. And another great thing about this is the way that they are. Um, the pace that they're rolling out new filters is really good. You know, there are other apps that do the whole face thing, um, the MSQ thing, but it's really great because Facebook is, you know, they're updating it. They're adding new things. I mean, you go in there and it's like, hey, there's a new movie coming out. And now you have faces for that. So I think that this is going to be a really good product for business. Um, you know, the two person thing is going to be a really good start. And then moving that into um, eventually possibly having some branding and stuff tied in. Yeah. So. I heard, a, I've seen a comment over here. It said maybe in addition, they could add video filters. They could add audio filters um, in addition to the video filters. And I think that's a really great idea. They do have lighting in there already, but that's about mm-hmm. it. And, and, and I mean, that's actually really cool. There's so many possibilities with this when you really boil it down to, you know, touching on like partnerships, for example, you know, did they partner with Disney and do Star Wars? You know, do they have mm-hmm. like finding, you know, finding Dory? You know, I know I'm still on Disney, I guess, but. <laughs> they have finding dory and have it where like hey you can you know not just look like the fish but maybe sound like the fish or something so oh, did you see finding dory that little her little baby voice is adorable uh, i've not seen it yet actually um <laughs> but i've heard a lot of really good things about it yeah it was good so i'm gonna keep going all right topic number two is let's talk to basically okay so topic number two is a new feature for um and from Facebook, uh, they have a new uh, slideshow feature there that they are adding in to Facebook. And I don't know if you've had a chance to check this out. Um, I didn't have the yeah. update yet. But I don't Face- have the update yet either. They did update Facebook, but I didn't have I didn't have the feature yet. But basically, what it is, uh, you know, they're looking to compete with you know with Apple with Google Photos. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in the case of Apple, they have a a new thing called uh, memories that's coming out in iOS 10. Uh, mm-hmm. Google also obviously has Google photos with basically create a movie for you. So what Facebook slideshow is going to do is it's going to create many movies from photos and videos. Yeah, I think that's huge. I was just purchased an app uh, not that long ago, ripple. And then mm-hmm. I use like Animoto and stuff to create those kinds of videos. But now, I mean, Facebook's just, making all of our dreams come true. <laughs> They're adding in everything that we needed um, and that we've been paying all these third party companies to do. And I love how they test things out in a very strategic way. Like, I don't know if you, uh, well, they thanked all the businesses for being, you know, having a business page and you can create those little mini movies. And mm-hmm. then, um, you know, if you've been friends with somebody for so long, they created the mini movies, the year recaps, they were already kind of testing this out to see how many people would use it. And, uh, and once they've seen like how that engagement grows and with people using those videos and creating those stories, it's smart of them now to roll it out for forever. You know, you can just have this feature built in. Absolutely. You know, and, and you mentioned like Ripple, for example. I mean, that's a that's a really great tool. Um, I would say, you know, it's it's a free download. There are some additional add-ons you can buy. I think they're between like ten dollars and like sixty dollars, I think, for a year. But I could see Facebook at some point buying that company out or you know, Facebook or, or, you know, maybe Google would buy them or something. Mm-hmm. I only paid a dollar for the app. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they're pri- a lot of pricing has fluctuated. It's moved a lot towards um, about the whole like freemium app, you know, get it yeah. for free and then 
hey, do you want to remove the watermark? Pay for process? everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm not a fan of that model. I mean, I understand mm -hmm. why they're doing it, but it's a lot. I mean, it adds up when you really start to look at apps. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, not just having like yeah. three apps do it. It does. It adds up really quickly. Plus, not everyone wants to do everything on iPhone. Like, I was just meeting with someone today. They're like, can I do it on my desktop? And I'm like, no, not really, you know. Mm -hmm. They're not yeah. for real anyway. So. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the unfortunate side of things. Everybody's sorry, really <laughs> do it. Sorry, I was reading his comment. I love it. <laughs> yeah, everybody's trying to push you towards mobile. And, I mean, there are certain actions that I just I don't like to do them on mobile. Um, yeah. Only if, you know, only if I have to, then I'll do it. But most of the time, I try to get it on the desktop. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually read this comment. So it said Facebook's becoming the Swiss Army night. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I'm kind of actually surprised in the sense that some of the companies, like, why don't they just you know patent their idea to where then Facebook can't come out with a competitor that does practically the same thing. Exactly. Um, you know, that, I mean, you would think like, for instance, Snapchat would have something kind of already, you know, patented with all of their technology, uh, yeah. you know, because obviously the writing is on the wall, like Facebook, every time Snapchat comes out with something, Facebook's like, hey, that's a good idea. Let's come out. Well, they, already, they already announced this. This isn't on the list, but they had already announced this a month or so ago, two months ago, where they're mm -hmm. going to have disappearing, you know, messages. So it's right. kind of the same exact concept as Snapchat. Yeah. yeah and I. Uh, I think I was telling Vincent a while back, I listened to a podcast, I think it was back in like 2007, 2008, and it was talking about um, how there's really not going to be that many major players. You know, I think at the time it was like Apple and Google and Amazon or something. And like, you know, basically they're combining the name into like Apple, Google, Zon or something, you know, something weird like that, because everybody is essentially doing the same thing. And fast forward about 10 years later and everything is virtually the same. Um, yeah. every company is, you know, trying to one up the other. Exactly. So. What did it, there was an article that was just shared and it was like the top 10 most popular apps. Um, mm -hmm. and like five of them were all owned by Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember that one. Uh -huh. yeah, I just shared it. I was trying to find, um, it was, of course, Facebook, Instagram, you know, was on that oh, list. Yeah. I was trying to find some of the others that were on there, but they were like all owned by Facebook. Yeah, it's, it, well, and it's, the funny thing would be, you know, feel free to put that in the uh, chat window for everybody. The funny yeah. thing would be if um, if everybody was, uh, the funny thing would be if everybody was not aware that Facebook owned three of those four companies. You know, if it was yeah. Facebook, you know, and WhatsApp and Instagram and so forth. That's what it is. So um, it's, I don't know if you can read it here, but it's WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, um, can't read that small. Uh, Uber, it's, 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 Spotify, yeah. Twitter, Netflix. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. Those are all the top most popular apps in the world. So not just the US. So WhatsApp is still the most popular one with 41.2 million, and that's, then, which that's Facebook crazy. owns. And then Messenger, Facebook owns, is more popular than even Facebook, which is crazy. Um, yeah. You know, and then Snapchat, Instagram, all of those. So. Yeah. And I'm the most surprised, I think, that WhatsApp and Messenger are all the way at the top. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that they're trumping Facebook because, you know, you kind of have, you have to have, well, I guess in order to use Messenger, I think you have, you have to have a Facebook account, but I guess WhatsApp, you don't. But I guess maybe people aren't using the Facebook on their mobile device as much as they're using Messenger. You know, maybe um, they're using Messenger more. That's a really good point. I, I personally, I tend to gravitate towards, mm -hmm. you know, using Messenger and then, um, using, for instance, like the individual apps, like if I'm using Facebook groups, I go to the groups app um, versus to Facebook. Um, I know there's some features, you know, like uh, I think it's live video and um, let's say it's live video. And I think the 360 photos, um, I think you have to have, you know, the the Facebook app in order to be able to use those at the moment. So I'm not sure. I'm not really sure why that's, you know, why we're seeing that trend. But, um, you know, it's very interesting to see that. Uh, you know, messenger apps are there. And, and I actually think messenger apps are going to stay around, you know, towards the top because we're moving into chat bots and so forth. Yeah. And I mean, never, I, I just don't ever have people's email addresses or maybe phone numbers with me, but I can get a hold of them on Facebook. Absolutely. It makes it a lot easier. 
and I guess also besides, I mean, if you are in Facebook, you do launch, you know, Messenger does dump you off into the Messenger app if you've got it installed. True. So, let's see. So um, let's see. Topic number three for today. Let's see. This is one of my favorites. Uh, this one, yeah. Uh, this is the one about. Um, go ahead and tell. Go ahead and tell. Uh, tell the audience what this one is. Yeah, Facebook is rolling out featured events. So I can't even tell you how many clients that we've worked with in our area that's like, we just need one events calendar. And but the hurdle has always been, you know, trying to filter in the events to put it on your website, right? So there's been all these mm -hmm. like community event pages and things like that that's been created. But Facebook's streamlined that done all the work for us, you'll now have featured events and uh, you post that and perfect. So all the events that are going on in your community, you never have to worry about what there is to do this weekend. And Facebook will curate all that information, whether they provide it or not, if you want to share it, and then put it right into one area where you can see what all's happening um, and um, put it all in one spot for you. It still limits you to the 500 invites, um, which can be a challenge if you want to invite like all your friends to an event or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's preventing spam, of course. Absolutely. Fun. And they are rolling it out to, you know, right now, a select a uh, number of cities they're starting with boston chicago dallas houston you know la miami new york san francisco seattle dc basically all the the major cities um of course then they're going to look to roll that out to you know other ones as well but this is actually gonna be really nice um i i'm really intrigued to see kind of how all these tools fit together because yeah you know this would be perfect you know to tie into like facebook pages or to tie into groups um uh, so forth um i'm actually wondering this isn't an app, so I'm actually wondering if they're going to make an app for events, maybe. I think it's genius. I mean, how many times do you wonder, like, what's happening? And I do go look at the events because sometimes you don't always see um, events that you're invited to. And I think this is strategic on Facebook's part as well, mm -hmm. because some people have complained, like, I put that event there, but nobody's you know responded. Well, right. now they're training us to go there first to see what's happening because it's that one-stop shop of what's all going on in your community. And then you can choose, you know, to follow and subscribe to some people's events um, because that subscribe feature rolled out a while ago. But I don't think a lot of people are taking part in it, but this will allow people to kind of subscribe to different events and then get more um, involved with spending more time on Facebook, which is their ultimate goal. Absolutely. You know, they want you to stay on Facebook, mm -hmm. but also they also want you to share more personal updates and so forth as well. And I think by yeah. getting people to use events more, whether it's, you know, for my personal account, you know, for my profile or for my business, um, mm -hmm. they make it easier for people to do that because, you know, if, if, if all people do is log into Facebook and check the newsfeed, they're missing out on a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, this way this will hopefully yeah. get them uh, to stick around a lot longer. Well, yeah, Facebook just made that huge algorithm update. Anyway, and I think that's one of your tips, actually. So, yeah, going to prevent and, some of those uh, just newsfeed updates. It's going to, you know, filter in the content that people care about, just like what you said. <laughs> can you can you tell people about that that uh, algorithm update? Sure. So, yeah, Facebook just rolled out an algorithm update again. You know, as soon as you think you get it figured out then something changes. <laughs> but their ultimate goal is just to keep the network more human, more people involved, and you feeling like you're not just being bombarded with business messages. Even though we're all business you know, professionals and we want people to see our content, we're going to have to think a little creative about how we're doing this because this algorithm update is now featuring and giving more priority to people's friends, their family members, the photos, and the life events that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So the more that you can get people kind of to subscribe subscribe to your business page or sharing content that has to be, you know, even I want to say less content, but better content that's going to be shared um, more often. You're going to have to fight kind of this, this uh, Facebook war for eyeballs that mm -hmm. and integrate a, an ad budget for sure. Absolutely. You have to have an ad budget. I mean, and uh, you know, here, here's the thing. I, I like this update. I think for a lot of people, they're going to, you know, I know you're going to have a lot of businesses, they're going to, you know, because I think a lot of people don't get Facebook. They don't, they think that, well, Hey, I'm going to just because somebody's a fan of my page, just because I'm friends with somebody, that means they're going to see my content. Exactly. And that's not the case. Um, you know, it, it's all about building a relationship with that person so that you're connected, not just through a Facebook page, but, you know, possibly on a personal level, mm -hmm. uh, through messenger and so forth. 
you know, in the beginning, you know, and the benefit to that is, um, so as people are sharing things, I don't have to, you know, me as a business, I don't have to rely on just my Facebook page. I'm using all these touch points to get my content in front of people. I mean, personally, I sh here, this is my like strategy. I share to my Facebook page. I then have a, a Facebook group and, you know, and I have certain, you know, members in that group and I share it there. And then I will also share it to my profile. And nine times out of 10, I get more response from people on my profile and on the group than I do on the page. And, you know, and it's just, it's, it actually, I mean, it's beneficial because people still share it, but you know, it, I think it will help you offset the fact that, you know, the page is not going to get much priority. But you bring up a very, very good point. I actually mm -hmm. uh, just had this conversation. If you don't mind, I'm going to share this link here yeah, to sure. um, this. I think more businesses need to find another intimate setting to have conversations with their audience versus just their page. So I am a huge fan of having a business page, but then maybe even a private group to your clients or something else that is um, a step deeper or to make sure that they're getting that notifications. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of just doing Facebook groups. I think you definitely need to have a Facebook page, but I'm a fan of adding in another group for the people that you know is your tribe, you know, mm -hmm. like the people that really want to hear everything that you have to say, because they're going to get those notifications. Um, or, you know, you're turning your personal profile into one that people can follow and get those updates from you if you're a solopreneur or something like that. Absolutely. You know, and it's all about providing a little bit of variety as well. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, for example, don't take the same update and post it to your Facebook page and then yes. take the same link and copy it and put it on your profile. You know, mm -hmm. you only need to post it once and then share it back to those different touch points, but change up the message that you're giving the audience. You know, tell people like why you find something really interesting, mm -hmm. you know, and so forth. Um, you know, so I love, love your point there about, you know, doing pages and groups. I mean, that's a good article to check out. Uh, you know, personally, like I said, I have both. You know, I use them for select things. I even have a, uh, you know, this is my favorite way to use groups. I have a think tank group. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, the whole point of that is I only want to invite my best customers, the people that I interact with the most yep. into that group. And then I want to be able to have open dialogue with them, you know, knowing, hey, you know what? They have my best interest in my business at heart. Like they want to tell me, you know, hey, this, you know, this stinks. I don't like your website update. Or, you know, I really wish this product would do this. Um, you know, it's a good way to gather that feedback and kind of, you know, filter out the other noise that's there. That's a perfect example of how to use it. So you're not selling them anything. You're just staying in touch with them. You're keeping them up to date on anything that's happened in your business and you're allowing them to get that feedback, but you're always staying in touch with them. And I think that's the whole reason why we need to use social is to stay in touch. I mean, of course, your ultimate goal is to get business, but it's also to keep business. And if you keep business and keep those people happy, they're mm -hmm. going to bring you the additional business and you can right. feed more people into your think tank. So I think it's going to work more that way then. Yeah. You know, I think I mentioned this last week, like people, like, I think I was talking about like Facebook notes, mm -hmm. but I said, you know, people lead to people. Yep. So, you know, if you have exactly. a really strong relationship with just a small group of people, those people can, you know, like you said, they can help bring in more business. They can help spread the word. They're happy to talk about your business to other people, uh, knowing that because you know they were very satisfied. They got a lot of value out of what you did. Exactly. Yeah. Word of mouth is always the best way to get business. And this is just taking that word of mouth to world of mouth, which makes right. it that's actually really more cool. power, powerful. <laughs> I'm actually gonna tweet that. <laughs> that was really good, actually. I have a vlog on it, actually. Really? Well, word, if you have it's that, called World of Mouth, yeah. <laughs> here I'll send it to you or post it in here sounds good somebody was like is there a typo in your blog article I'm like nope not really <laughs> you can read it that, that is a I gotta say I, I really like that I mean that is just a really good saying I mean it's really um, hopefully people look at that and say you know what you're right on that because mm -hmm. you know it's not about just you know talking about yourself all the time I mean, it's you know you have to get outside that echo chamber and you have to be you, know, you have to be able to um you know uh, reach you know reach a broader audience so exactly i'm gonna make sure that, i'm gonna make sure we tweet this one out because this is really good so thank you so much for these links by the way thanks so let me see what do we got here so we got let's see we talked about the 
featured events. We've talked about the changing newsfeed algorithm. By the way, you know, just a quick note on that as I switch topics here. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it, you know, as a business. Uh, the only way, the only reason you should be worried about it is if the only way you are trying to reach fans and customers is through your Facebook page. Like if all you're doing is just posting, a, posting mm -hmm. something and going about your business, you need to change your approach. Um, you're, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting that content in front of people. Um, you're going to want to, you know, either have a Facebook ads budget. Well, you should have a Facebook ads budget. Um, and you're going to want to start, to, you know, share some of your content out to your profile, to your page. Uh, sorry, to your profile, to your group, um, in other groups that you're a part of and so forth, so you can reach that audience. On a positive note, I've seen a lot more yeah. businesses feeling more comfortable sharing personal information too. And there's still mm -hmm. several that are kind of, you know, working through that hurdle of feeling comfortable sharing other people's content and uh, their own in a more intimate, not news kind of scripted approach. Um, but I've seen a lot more now feeling comfortable with sharing like those birthdays, those celebrations, those photos. So I think, I think uh, people are learning a lot more and I'm just hoping that um, small businesses keep up with this new tech because I think these small businesses are the ones that can win the most with these kinds of updates. It's now giving them a, an opportunity and a platform to use their brains mm -hmm. over their budget, you know, and to be able to, invest in just a little bit of time and creativity, but to connect with their audience tenfold. Because I think somebody that's working in a smaller business is the business that's, you know, doing live streaming and that's sharing these updates, I'm going to be more interested in than, uh, you know, a person that's just doing it for a, a big brand that I may not have a personal connection with. Yeah. You know, and the key thing is, I mean, it's, it really doesn't matter if you're, you know, you, you, I mean, you know, like, you know, the companies that work for, I mean, Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, like every single company, B2B, B2C, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You have to get personal. You have to get beyond, I'm just going to share like my stuff. You know, I'm just going to share my content. Like it, you need to give people, they don't want, you know, I think we've said this before. People want to connect with a person and not with like a brand. Yep. Like they like the brand, but we've, and, and that's the way it used to be. It used to be all about, you know, the brand. It's moved on to people want to connect with the people behind the brand. They want to connect, for instance, with the person managing the social media channels. You know, they want to connect with the customer service rep, you know, because, hey, if I, if I connect with that service customer service rep, for instance, and they do a really great job, I'm going to talk more positively about the brand. Yep. Um, I'm going to give that person a shout out. You know, there's a lot of people in a lot of these companies, they don't get the exposure they should, but, and they do an excellent job. You know, and, and this is really great that, you know, we're starting to kind of pull back the veil and let everybody see who actually is responsible for running these companies. Um, you know, I, I think you've probably followed Zappos, Yes. you know, uh, Tony Shea, like, I mean, they've, you know, they've, they kind of started this a few years ago. <laughs> they've been gr amazing. I love it. Oh, they're so it you know, and it was all about, you know, they wanted to hire the right people, but they also wanted to give people like the, you know, the ability to make decisions regardless of whatever level you're on. Right. So, you know, no, if you're a business. That's perfect. And how many people share their content? It goes viral just because they're doing great customer service and other people are willing to share that. But the, yeah, mm -hmm. their Zappos Cares campaign, campaigns have been mm -hmm. amazing. That's what really stellar customer service is all about. Absolutely. So great points here. So um, I'm going to go, I got two more topics and three tools and then we'll sure. wrap things up. All right. So let's see, we're, um, this one sort of is a tool, but it's not. So, this one is actually about Facebook uh, rolling out two new Google Chrome extensions. They've rolled out uh, the ability to share on Facebook and the ability to save on Facebook. Yes. And we're going to do it. I'm excited about both of them, uh, especially the share, because it's just so much easier. You know, Pinterest had this forever, and it just makes it a lot easier as you're going. You know, if you find an article, you don't have to worry about copy the length and shortening it and all of that jazz. You can just share it. Um, and the save feature is my best friend when I'm trying to curate content. I mm -hmm. use the save built, you know, the feature all the time. So just, you know, saving an article and then going back to all my saves and then saying, oh, yeah, this is the content that I wanted to share for next week. Yeah. So, OK, so let's, let's talk. Uh, let's talk like process. Mm -hmm. So. How do you, so what's your normal process? Like what tools do you use? For example, 
Okay, so maybe before, um, maybe let before me talk this about, and how. Yeah, yeah. Let me talk about the free one. Just if if you're only using Facebook, I create an interest list which mm -hmm. I think that's like one of their most hidden secrets on Facebook. If you go to your Facebook homepage and you go on the left-hand side, um, it's right under where it says groups and it says interest. Um, and then you can create an interest list. So then I find all the people that I really love their content and I add it to this interest list. So then all of the things that are happening um, and mine's about social media and marketing. So all the things that are happening, I'm getting kind of a real time feed of all of this information. So it's right there. And it's, it's exactly like how Twitter lists work, but it's on Facebook. So you can filter out basically the noise and you can put everything in this group and you don't have to add the person um, or like the company page in order to put it into your li interest list either. So it's a great way you can keep up on competitors, you can keep up on things you wanna share, et cetera. But I use that to filter in my um, share content on Facebook. So I bring everything into the interest list and then I will share from there or I will take um, the information from the interest list and my saves and I will create my content for planning on going. Um, I do use a few other tools, um, you know, like HubSpot and uh, Agora Pulse, but primarily I'm, you know, for Facebook, I use that in order to kind of create my, my content for the month. And then I break it down 10 for one rule. 10 posts of every 15 I share is curated. Four posts are blog articles, and one is that soft sale ask ask for something. Do you happen to have an article on that by chance? I'm sure I you do. do. Yeah. Um, so I just dropped a, a um, I just dropped the link in there for creating ad interest lists. Um, it's a little bit of an older tutorial, but they still work. Um, I I personally I use interest lists as well. Um, it's great, you know, it's great for being able to put pages in there. It's great for being able to put profiles, you know, to mix and match. Mm -hmm. For example, I've got one for um, social media uh, resources that I like to check out. Um, I've got another for, you know, friends and or family. I've got one for close friends. Um, I've got another for, you know, for example, I like to check out uh, a lot of, I do a lot of video editing. So I like to check out, you know, pages that share a lot of that kind of content yep. so I can go right to it. I don't have to like scroll. I rarely scroll through the mm -hmm. newsfeed. You don't have to search. You can just literally just go into this interest and you can keep it public if you want other people to be able to join in um, or you can keep it private to where, you know, only you see it. And I add my team in to the one for social and our competitors. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have one for our clients as well, of course. So, um, you know, creating that and then adding your team to it, then they can all kind of be on the same page, make sure everybody sees everything at the same time. Absolutely. So, you know, so now that you have this new uh, save feature and share feature, you know, th this is going to be very useful because all you have to do is go to, you know, it does take a little bit of a setup, Yeah. but you know, you set up the list, you can continuously add to it. And then you find something you like, you click that uh, little carrot icon and select the save option. If you want to save that item. Um, in addition, I think I want to say, I'm going to pull up the Facebook mobile app actually. It's nice that they remind you too. Like I've saved things. I'm like, Ooh, I want to go back and check out this video. And mm -hmm. I forgot about it. And then Facebook like reminds me in a week, like, Hey, you need to go watch this. You have 10 saved items, you know, mm -hmm. in your, in your list. Absolutely. I mean, I, that's actually cool. You get an email. And then I think like sometimes when you log in, they say, here's items that you've saved yep. recently. And so by the way, these do show up. Um, if you, for instance, go into the Facebook, um, if you go into the Facebook, uh, the Facebook mobile app. Okay. So I'm mm -hmm. on iPhone here. Um, if you go into the Facebook mobile app, go under the more option. Um, if you have any interest list you've created there, are un you can uh, scroll down and they will be there um, under the favorite section and you can move these up and down. Uh, you can see how many updates are there from each account and so forth. So there's a lot of really um, useful things there. That's cool. So. Honestly, I did not know that it was on the mobile app. So yeah, it, they kind of bury it because if you normally go into the news feed where you normally hit things, um, mm -hmm. there's an icon at the top. And if you tap that, that will actually pull up um, your nice. uh, friends and you'll be able to see like your friends and see who's online and that sort of stuff, how long they've been online. But they did bury it. It's under the one at the bottom, all the way at the bottom. So um, super, super, super useful. So um, that is so in regards to this feature. So, OK, so that's that's your things um the way that i typically curate content is i will use pocket um you know for an article or whatever i like open the article and then i'll typically 
put it in pocket and I have a tag that I use, for instance, for curated content. And then I just have to go back and go through a pocket and then put that into whatever tool I want to use. But the is key thing with that or something or what is uh, pocket 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 is actually a really awesome tool. So it's an app. It's a desktop app and a mobile app. Um, it lets you, it also saves an offline version as well. So nice. um, you basically can pocket, you can basically pocket anything makes it available offline. And then um, for example, on my iOS device, um, let's say I'm reading an article. Say I happen to, you know, I open somebody's email and I click their link. Um, I want to put that in pocket. It has a share extension. So all I do is tap the share icon. I tap pocket. It will then give me the option to tag and then it saves it automatically. Nice. Uh, so all that stuff is pretty much there. Now I will say the, the one downside is um, you do have to tag things. If you don't tag things, their search doesn't always work that great. And so, you, you know, it can be hard to find things even though you know what the, the term is that you're looking for. Um, yeah. But overall, it, you know, it, Actually put everything in pocket. I then go through it. And then if I'm like, well, hey, that's something I want to save for later, I might put in Evernote um, mm -hmm. and so forth. But that's basically how I'm using, uh, nice. how I'm curating content. But, you know, with these new updates, um, you are getting two Chrome extensions. As we mentioned, uh, you get the share option, um, which is really great. So if somebody's on your website, they can install, you know, if they're in Chrome, they can install the uh, share button. And it basically will then let somebody share it out to Facebook. And then you also have the save option. Um, to easily save something um, directly to Facebook. So um, again, Facebook is taking over. You know, what's next? Are they going to have their own browser? I mean, <laughs> well, they already so. have their own search. So, yeah. I I think the next thing I need is I need a messenger desktop app. Yeah. That would be you know great because That's I always good. find myself I get a you know I get something on you know mm -hmm. on the desktop then I have to go to Facebook. I'd love to have a messenger app so I don't have to pick up my phone and check it out all the time. Yeah, I just like leave it on my Facebook on, so just kind of mm -hmm. there. But that would be that would be a good idea. Yeah, um, I think I've heard they're working on one of those. But um, again, who knows? We don't know when they're going to come out with stuff. They're always always testing stuff. It might be next week. You know? Yeah. Never know. Okay. So That's one last tip for today for everybody, and then I've got just a couple of quick tools. By the way, let's see. Another question here in the chat. We need an option to transfer all of our followers and followers from Twitter over to Facebook. Uh -huh. um, I think actually couldn't, I think at one point you could, could if you go to like facebook.com slash Twitter. You used to be able to connect together. Yeah. You used um, to be able to like check it out. It does see. the same thing that um, Facebook does. So like if you are, well, I guess, Twitter doesn't do that. It's a contact in your phone, but it lets you know, like, if somebody's joined Twitter, if they're a contact in your phone. Um, but yeah, it kind of did. Yeah, sorry. The, yeah, the Facebook.com slash Twitter link, that lets you connect Facebook Four. to Twitter. But um, <laughs> it would be, you know, I think you can actually still do that. I think you can, like, import an email list or something. But mm -hmm. so. you can. You can import an e email list. Let's see. Topic number six, we've got, you know, we're actually switching topics, not from, uh, we're going over to Twitter real quick. Um, <laughs> This one is actually a new feature, Twitter stickers. And I am going to talk about the other, you know, the other tool as well. Um, I think you're familiar with that one, but uh, Twitter me. stickers, are you a big Twitter user at all? I love Twitter. Yes. I'm excited so, for their apps. What's your, what's your Twitter handle? Let's, let's put that here in the, at my name, Jessica, J E and Harry, you want to put, put it in there? there? Here, I'll put it in there. Or, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Okay. By the way, I did forget to mention to everybody, you know, if you have any questions, you can always tweet. Um, you can put slash Q or you can put, um, you can tweet me or you can tweet Jessica or you can put in uh, hashtag social chatter as well. So um, what are your th what's your thoughts on this? What, so Twitter's introducing stickers, right? Awesome, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know a lot about this one, I have to admit. I heard about their new dashboard that they're doing and, mm -hmm. and all of that, but I hadn't heard about the stickers. So oh, maybe I'm going to ask your feedback on this one as I look at um, it. <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, I skip that one. it's kind of cool that they're starting to really make Twitter a little more engaging than just a place to share blog articles and news and links. Um, I really, though, I, I like the idea of stickers. I'm kind of surprised though that they've not done more with Periscope. 
that they've not started to you know really tie that more into their product because I think that's the direction that they should be going. Um, stickers is kind of like a you know a little bit of a detour, you know. So it's literally just like adding emojis yeah. onto your photos. Absolutely, that's all it is. You know, in, in their case, there's like a here. I'll actually give you guys a link. There's a I an elephant. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's kind of like meh. It's like yeah, like yeah. I don't know that I did like a big PR thing about it, but I mean, that's cool. Emojis are cool. Everybody loves emojis. So you can't go wrong, I guess, with adding it. I'm not like overwhelmed with joy, but it's- cool. I mean, they've done some really neat stuff. Like for instance, they were working with the NBA. They did a lot of um, NBA emoji, you know, which I thought was really cool, like around the all-star game. So this is, you know, these are very similar, similar in the same vein, you know, the same style. Can you add um, text to your photos? Now that I would be excited about. Um, does not look like you can do that with this. Looks like you get, you know, a, a select uh, group Thanks. of stickers to be able to add, you know, um, I don't know. I, I guess they want to make Twitter destination, but again, everybody's, it's really just getting to the point where everybody is doing the same exact thing, every single tool. Um, mm -hmm. So. I don't see the stickers. Is it not rolled out yet? Um, it was starting to get rolled out to some accounts. Um, they said, coming soon but then again i have 46 updates that i need to do on my phone so that be <laughs> part of it right there yeah that's a, that's quite a few updates i i did update twitter the other day but i'll be honest i don't really use the twitter app very much i use that's all i uh, use so i actually use tweetbot or sorry is it tweetbot sorry um yeah i use tweetbot actually yeah i only use like <laughs> then again i have a lot of apps on here so in my defense. So actually, it'd be really funny to see us compare who has more apps on their phone because I probably have uh, probably about the same that you have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have like, let me see. I'm going to check this out real quick. How many apps? Let's see. Let's go to settings. Let's go to general. Let's go to, it's about. You got to get the largest storage on your phone and then I purchase more. So. I have 128 gigs. Okay. I have 565 apps. Wow. All right. Where do you see this at? So, okay, go to settings uh -huh. and go to general mm -hmm. and then go to about. Okay. And then I have, uh, and then it'll see under about, it'll say applications. Mm -hmm. I have, um, how many, I've used 113 gigs. <laughs> wow. Ooh, you got me beat. The opponent. You know, that's actually funny. Uh, left. <laughs> how many, how many left? 60 left. Cause I had a oh, wow. more. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would, you know, I'd say this, uh, that's a that's lot. Kinda, yeah. Oh, hold on. You've got, hold on. How many, hold on. How are you? Hold on. You got it. Hold on. You, you've used 50, hold on. You've used 50 gigs. Okay. So I've actually used. No, it says I have. Oh, I'm sorry. Where is it? How many you've used? It says I so have I, the what, capacity of. So you have 128 gig model and then mm -hmm. it's capped at 113 gigs. So gotcha. you have 60 gigs left, which means you have 53 gigs of data. Okay. So I'm not as bad as I thought. You've got a lot more data than I do. I have 13, 16 gigs available. Um, but it's probably like, you know, it's probably like photos and stuff like that. But um, mm -hmm. I would say this, let's see. So somebody was asking me real quick, uh, oh, how many screens of apps? Um, I personally, I only have, Thanks. I have three screens of, two screens of apps actually. Oh yeah. Um, One, I put everything two, in the three. Oh because you put it in folders. Yeah, see? put it in folders and I use search. See, I, I don't have time for that. I just want to hit it. Yeah, I, I know what it's, screen it's only more like my screens weird. are organized. Each of my screens are a folder. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. I'm gonna actually run into a dilemma at some point because you can only have 15 pages of apps per folder. Okay, so that's you have me 15. beat with 94. I don't have 94 apps on here. So, yeah, so it's... Uh, Here's the thing. I mean, I, I will say this. Everybody has different ways they like to organize things. I would say, you know, again, mm -hmm. if you're a business owner, um, use what is actually comfortable for you. Exactly. You know, if, if you find you're like always having to hunt and peck for like the right app, maybe, you know, maybe you want to try the folder option and search for things. Like I have all my social um, apps all in one folder. Um, mm -hmm. So that might be. Uh, I do that for like editing apps and things like that. I have all the right. folder, but like, as far as like the actual application, like, social applications and or like um like ones that i use all the time 
uh-huh. have them outside of folders because I don't want to search. Yeah, I, I do the same exact thing. I have like, I have a few here that are you know specific apps that I always use, mm-hmm. and then I've got a couple that are you know if I go to the other page, I guess you know I've got mm-hmm. some that are specifically in folders. So, um, and I also have one where like whenever I download new apps, I put them into like you know an app store review folder so I can mm-hmm. see if it's something I want to keep, and if not, I'll get rid of it. Yeah. So let me just let me check out the comments here. A lot of photo and video editing apps on here. Yeah, it, it, that's actually interesting. You mentioned Ripple earlier. There's so many apps nowadays that, you know, this app does this and this app does that. And this one does this one little feature. Um, you know, for example, when I take photos, I use Camera Plus. But if I want to take like a Facebook mm-hmm. 360 photo, I have to use the camera app. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I typically kind of have to, um, I have to kind of, you know, bounce back and forth between that. Um, by the way, so Jose, good to see you again. Um, no, I mean, we're not, pl- I'm not planning to leave Blab yet. I, um, you know, I am going it's to in the cards. Do it. So I'm going to be, Mike and I are transitioning. We do the weekly show on Tuesdays. Yeah. And I'm looking at alternatives, but. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to chat about that afterwards. and going to see what, um, you know, see if there's any, uh, you know, see what tools are out there. I know there's a, this a is few, the one that I'm looking at. Is it Huzzah, I think? Mm-hmm. I've seen a few other people use it and it looks pretty seamless. Yeah, I, cr- I created an account for that. I haven't, I haven't tried it out yet. Um, there's also Wirecast, but Wirecast is like, it's a really good app, but it's expensive. Mm-hmm. I want to see uh, how quickly Facebook rolls theirs out though, and then go from there. Like, I don't want to just move because we build up a good, you know, following of people each week for Tuesday. Right. And I just don't want to be like, oh, join us here. And then, oh, come over here. Like, it's not cool. No. So. Yeah, I mean, it, I, and that's the tricky part about this. Like, I love the fact, for instance, with Blab, I love the fact that I get a replay afterwards that I can you know, save and put up on YouTube. I think Huzzah does that. Um, mm-hmm. With Facebook, you know, they're not going to give you a replay. Well, sorry, let me phrase it. They are going to give you a replay. It's just not going to typically be in a file you can download and put up on YouTube. You know, Boo. I mean, yeah, I'm just so sad about lab, just how it's been going. I yeah, I want that in your recording, but I'm just like, yeah. I, I mean, know. but they usually think they've got such a they have a they had a good product, I'm too. <laughs> yeah, you know, they really did. good product. What's and, the name of their actual app that they're focusing on now? It's uh, uh Zabo, I think. No, it's um, Which something it chill, about? something and chill. Um, well, I'll find it. But it's just basically people hanging out. I mean, it's a good concept. Um, it's people hanging out, kind of. They can watch YouTube videos together. They can all talk mm-hmm. together and FaceTime together. Um, they can. Um, oh, what is it? What's? I don't remember the name of it. Something in chill. So I'm actually wondering if you know, if Blab's exit strategy was this, like maybe they went in creating their app, not knowing, you know, going in with the expectation that, you know, hey, Facebook, no one else is really doing this yet. And then maybe once Facebook rolled out their tool, they kind of said, okay, well, that game plan's shot. Then they're, you know, then they kind of just said, okay, we're going to give up and transition to something else. Um, Overall, you know, I, I liked this tool. I thought it worked way better than Hangouts. Mm-hmm. Um, but, absolutely yeah I was know. never I love Google I hate Hangouts like it just never worked for me you know and uh, and YouTube also is coming out with, with, with by the way their own stream as well they so, have um, it I'm interested to see what's on the list of things to talk about but I'm interesting, interested to see what they're doing with their creator studio so mm-hmm. YouTube has rolled out a lot of training for creators and they're starting to reward, reward creators on gold, bronze, different levels. Um, so I'm, I'm really interested to see where that goes and how how they are qualifying people. Yeah. Is it based on subscribers? Is it based on um, minutes watched? You know, I, I'm really interested to see how that's going to work. That, that's kind of fascinating because, yeah, I, part, of, part of me wants to say subscribers, hopefully not because there's so many people that just buy subscribers. You know, they go from Five thousand, all of a sudden they got a hundred thousand. It's like, well, no. How did they do that? Um, they clearly did something else to manipulate that. And I wouldn't put that person in the, you know, in the creators group necessarily. Right. Um, if 
you know, if they went that route. Um, but yeah. I, I actually, I like your idea of the minutes watch that actually makes a lot of sense. You know, if they did that or some sort of engagement mm -hmm. uh, factor, because they do that a lot now with, you know, with their ad revenue, you know, if you have a video that is getting a lot of uh, comments and people are actually, you know, they're watching it versus, um, I have a huge number of subscribers. They're more apt to give you exposure in ad dollars based on that. Yep. So, yeah, yeah I think I that's. Make, I make a whole ten bucks a month off YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's it really varies. So. Oh. So um. So with that, let's let's get into three quick tools. Got a couple minutes. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so three quick tools here. So tool number one, I don't know if this is on your list. It's called stencil. Is that on your list? Uh, I had not heard of that before. Okay. But ooh, so Stencil is another design app. Uh, basically, it's creating images for social media, for blogging, for small businesses. Um, very similar to Canva. Hmm. It's uh, free for up to 10 images a month. You get unlimited, you can create unlimited images um, for nine dollars a month when billed annually now what's neat about this is that um, if you go with the the pro version mm -hmm. so you get to create unlimited images which is awesome uh, you know it basically at 100 about 100 bucks a year nice. so uh, you can create unlimited images they give you access to 670,000 background photos 200,000 plus icons and graphics you can keep unlimited favorites you can put logo watermarks if over 50 different templates and apparently some premium support. Um, this isn't Adobe's product, right? It's a different one. Uh, this is not Adobe's product. No, Adobe came out with one similar to that too, but Spark, I think, or they have like mm -hmm. post and spark. They basically took all their apps post. and what they did was they, um, they actually took the desktop app and broke them out into separate, uh, mobile applications. So you can do like the video on one, the images on, on one and so forth. Um, so that's stencil. Uh, what's also neat about this is it is a Google Chrome extension. Nice. So, um, you know, so you can install this and once you install it on Chrome, then you can actually uh, quickly create your images um, and so forth with their, uh, with their tool. That's actually kind of nice because then I don't have to, you know, I don't have to bookmark a website. I don't have to, you know, type in anything, just click a button. That so. does make it nice to share. I'm a huge Canva fan, though. I don't. I almost feel like a trader, like using anything else. Yeah, I mean, there's Canva. There's you know, uh, there's a Relay, Relay that I think I, it is. I I've used that because um, I met the guy that runs it at Social Media Marketing yeah, World. Yeah. yeah, and he's actually from my hometown. It was crazy. I didn't oh, cool. know he's from Lima, Ohio. I did not know that. Small world. Absolutely. Yeah, so I've started trying his out, but. Um, still just i've already kind of had everything kind of set and loaded in canva for work so mm -hmm. it just makes it easy for me to use that but, yeah because with canva you do get the branding piece which is nice mm -hmm. so. the folders and collaborating on projects together like that was the big win for me to be able mm -hmm. to share and collaborate with others on it i did post a link in here though um stock photos yep. so if anybody's paying for stock photos or whatever there's this is a link that's uh, just free stock photo sites that you can check out yeah, that is a really good one and then, stock photos so is here's a question so speaking of stock photos i'm not sure if it's in your article but is uh is stock yeah. unlimited yeah it's in the end of the article in, so okay if you cool. wanted yeah. unlimited photos for life for under 90 bucks there's a link on there at the end of that too Stock Unlimited. Yeah. That was like heaven when I found that. I literally just paid a company called 2020. Mm -hmm. Three grand a year for stock photos um, that were supposed to not be like stockish. And uh, yeah, I was kind of bummed out then when I found stock. I mean, I was excited when I found Stock Unlimited after that. But I was like, dang it, I could have had $3,000 more dollars in my pocket had I had found them before. 2020. Absolutely. And um, I also purchased the, uh, I got the stock unlimited package. I mean, it's 90 bucks, I think, mm -hmm. for the year. Forever. Yeah. Not just for the year, forever, for lifetime. Forever. I, for always. <laughs> and I will say this. So one thing I did notice about that, um, you probably, you might have seen, I talked about it a little bit, but 
I had a couple people ask me because I guess in the, the terms and conditions, um, they did mention, you know, when you do your stock photos, uh, some companies can come back and say, well, hey, that's my photo, you know, and so forth with a, you know, from a rights perspective. Um, uh-huh. Just, you know, it has it listed in the photo, whether it's commercial uh-huh. or commercial use or just for editorial use. So mm-hmm. the ter- ones you have to be careful on, if you're putting anything on a billboard or an ad that right. has a sit for sale, whatever in mm-hmm. it, um, that's where you have to have that commercial license for it. But if you're just using it in social posts, you're good. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so check that out, you know, have it clearly listed on the photos. Yeah, no, that, that's really good. I mean, a lot, a lot of people they don't, you know, here's the thing. A lot of people think, Hey, I'm going to go to Google and download images. And I just had a conversation me. with someone today and they're like, what if they don't lock it, it's free. You can do that. Right. And I was like, Oh no, 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 please don't. <laughs> no. You know, so if I'm a, you know, if I'm a business owner, here's the thing. I can kind of see how people might get confused with it. Yeah. They probably say, okay, I went to Google. They, you know, everybody thinks like Google's the earth, you know, or the entire world. And they think that, okay, I'm going to go to Google. And just because it comes up on Google, I can use it. Right. And I'm like, under Google oh, no, images. It doesn't, that... doesn't work that way. And then they're like, well, why is it there? <laughs> and, you know, I That's mean, that is exactly a good what they said after that. Why, well, why is it there then? <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and here's the thing it's, it's, you know, it's for ideas. You know, yeah. you know, partly, um, you know, two, it's yeah, a way to drive you back to content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, ever... attached to content. It's for SEO. Right. You know, if you're searching for something, you need to see it. It's just visual content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it might be like, well, hey, I like that button. Well, okay, if I like the way that somebody did that, button, I should go check out their content. And then, you know, let me start that relationship with them. Let me reach out to them and say, hey, I like this button you built. Can I use it, for instance, in my business? Um, you know, can I buy a, uh, buy a license for it and so forth? Uh, you know, it's it's yeah. rewarding the creator. And let me just tell you, because I had something like this happen to me recently. Yep. Um, here, there's a way to tell though, if somebody stole your little button or whatever you created without your permission. There's two different huh? ways that you can tell. One, you can drag your image into the toolbar of Google Images, and it'll tell you the first place that that was originated and all the copies of it out there. And two, if it's on a website, um, you can see uh, Wayback Archive, and it'll give you screenshots of what their website was before and kind of who had it at first. I recently mm-hmm. just had this with my, um, my actually, my six-step relationship marketing system, my funnel. Like, uh-huh. identical copy of it. Uh, so I went back and did some research, and I was like, yeah, that was definitely copied. <laughs> That's, yeah, and the Wayback Machine is always a really good tool to check out. Yeah. It takes a really good snapshot of everything, and you can, it's actually cool because you can go back and see, okay, well, what did that website look like, you know, when it first started? Yeah, exactly. What does it look like now? Yeah. Um, what images are being used like, and so forth? We had this in 2013. Yours didn't show up until 2015. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. So that's uh, what tool tool number two, or sorry, no, that's only tool number one. Wow. Okay, we didn't even do tool two yet. Um, by the way, I don't have the YouTube one on here this week. I actually have that for next week. Sorry. Um, I think we're talking about the. Is it? I think that was director. Um, another tool for today is called a uh, social stream. This is an iOS app, and it's kind of neat. Um, I'm I'm somewhat intrigued by some of these apps because a lot of them are really they're basically coming out with apps for everything. Like there's been ones that I've seen that are like, well, Hey, this is a social network, like for just restaurants, for instance, or, you know, people like restaurants or something like that. And so I kind of, I question why some of these companies are coming out with something, um, you know, coming out with some of these little micro like sites, basically. Right. You know, when Facebook already exists, Twitter already exists, like, you know, there's tons of chat rooms. Like why do we need another app? But basically what this one does is um, it pulls like all of your updates into one, um, pulls them all up all into one uh, feed. So basically one inbox. So you can get, you know, it does have cross post functionality um, built in. Um, you can organize your posts. You can you know, quickly reply to things without having to you know, bounce back and forth between apps. Um, there's some really good filtering as well. So it's um, pretty neat in that sense. So you can tie, you know, Facebook, for instance, and YouTube and Twitter together. Is um, it free? Um, it is free, actually. Yep. So it's mm-hmm. a free app. That so, might be good for anybody that's not paying for a tool that does it. Like we use um, Agora Pulse and we have HubSpot. So it has mm-hmm. that 
functionality of a stream kind of built in already, which is amazing. We use it all the time and create new streams to filter mm -hmm. in kind of um, other hashtags or like one for events, one for competitors, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but this is really nice for somebody that doesn't have that, you know, to be able yeah, to drop, drop the link in there. I mean, nice. free app, you know, it's worth giving it a try. Um, I would, you know, I'll give you my two cents on this real quick. Um, I would say it's cool to, you know, it's also nice because you can, you also have some like emoji keyboards and stuff as well. So you can um, add that as well when you're working within the app. I would say this, if you are going to connect, for instance, Instagram, I would be careful connecting Instagram um, only because Instagram has changed their API recently. You know, that's how uh, companies can access different things on Instagram. And a lot of them previously were doing things in a way that Instagram, um, you know, would remove functionality from, or sorry, the app would actually remove functionality from Instagram. For example, maybe you lost hashtags. And so if you're going to connect this, I'd say start with like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, you know, a couple of your other networks. Mm -hmm. and, you know, those are easier if you have any trouble. You can always reach out to them and try to get some help. But, um, you know, if it's Instagram and something happens, it's hard to really get somebody um, to get that fixed. Yeah. So. And it's a free app, so give it a try. Um, let's see. So tool number three. So tool number three, and this is, a, and it's funny, I kind of say this one towards towards the end, but um, tool number three is a new dashboard from Twitter, and it's a really cool app. It's called Twitter Dashboard. I'm going to put some links in here for everybody. Uh, basically, they have a desktop and a mobile app. Um, the desktop app is. You know, again, this is available to any business. I think it's what is it just U.S. businesses? I think, right? Um, yeah. And so just yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. No, absolutely good. I'm gonna let you take. No, this I was just gonna say I'm I'm excited. You finally like now they're incorporating new things like scheduling one mm -hmm. and um, which they have not had. Now you have a dashboard to kind of see how everything's performing all in one space. I know they have had the insights for a while, but uh, this is just going to make it a whole lot easier to manage your, your Twitter account. Um, so can you, you know, tell people like, what are, what's the benefit for this? I guess, what's the benefit for them for using this scheduling one? Um, I would say for sure, like a lot of people just have not had the opportunity to schedule on Twitter ever, unless you had a third party tool. So now you can do this right within Twitter and check your, your performance on each of your tweets. So similar to how Facebook has the insights and how you can schedule on Facebook and you can see how each of your content is, um, you know, performing, you're now going to have that on Twitter. So very easy dashboard to kind of incorporate your analytics with your scheduling of your tweets and, you know, to get feedback, um, you know, understand how everything's working on Twitter as well. Absolutely. You know, and um, so it's pretty simple. You basically log in um, and somebody just asked a second ago, you know, was this part of, was this like TweetDeck or like Hootsuite? You know, it's, it's like Hootsuite in a way um, you just don't have the ability to, you know, tie in other social networks. Right. Um, into this, you know, like Facebook and Instagram and so forth. Um, it's, you know, tweet, Twitter owns TweetDeck. Um, I'm not really sure if it's built on the same framework, the same, you know, uh, the same structure. It's very, it's very possible. Um, they started shutting down TweetDeck a while back. So it might've been, that might've been why this came out. Um, this is a pretty cool little app though. Um, the desktop one, you know, or sorry, last week we talked about this and they, uh, they rolled out Twitter Engage, which was a way for you as a, a business to be able to, you know, see who your audience composition was, to see, uh, you know, who was engaging, what accounts were actually favoriting. You know, like for instance, I found out that, like, you know, there was a major uh, account that was following following me, and um, you know, I was able to identify that. I was able to identify, you know, where's my audience at, so I could change possibly the posting times and so forth. Um, so with the new Twitter dashboard, I mean, you're going to get. Uh, you know, as Jessica mentioned, you get the scheduling feature, you get the analytics feature. Um, you used to could do scheduling from the, it was like ads.twitter.com, I think. Um, but now that you have all of this, it's all in the Twitter dashboard app. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, it's really neat, actually, I think, because when you first sign up, they're very similar to how, like, when you create a Facebook page. So they're like, hey, tell me about your business. Like, what category, what category are you in? Um, so I find that really fascinating. Um, right. the scheduling, do what? 
no, I liked that part too. Cause I think they're trying to, you know, kind of profile who's using it. You know? Right. Absolutely. And also I think in a way, you know, it's to learn more about who's using it, but I think it's also, you know, a lot of people said that Twitter was really difficult to use. Like when you first sign up, you, you don't know, you know, you knew absolutely nothing after that. Like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And so uh, with this, I think, you know, I think they're trying to make it a little easier for people to really understand the platform a lot better. Which I didn't think, I never thought Twitter was hard to use. Like I just thought it's kind of like. There were a few, a few pieces that were confusing, but overall I thought it was, I mean, you're just typing out text, you're pasting a link, you're attaching a photo. Like how's that, how's that difficult? DMs probably is what people are confused by, you know. The DM and then, and then obviously the other thing was the, uh, the reply. Yeah. So being able to, you know, start a tweet with the username, um, I think a lot of people were like, well, they didn't understand that. So. Right. Let me see what this is. So, so that's, uh, that's the Twitter dashboard app actually. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you probably set your business up as a local business. Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. This is something actually. So they have, so they have a desktop app. Um, they also have a mobile app as well. Um, the mobile app works pretty good. Um, so I, I, you know, here's the thing. I'm personally not going to switch from Hootsuite and Buffer. I'm not going to switch from those tools yet. Um, again, they tend to perform a little different functionality. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of, you know, this is free. I think it's worth maybe balancing if you're a business, taking some of your tweets, pushing some of them through dashboard and pushing some of them through your other channels and kind of see which ones perform the best. You know, maybe Twitter, for instance, will start to give you a uh, preference if you're using their app uh, versus, you know, using a third party app. I want to see if you can reschedule too, like, you know, put it mm-hmm. on autopilot on some of them. Right. Like if you're like, hey, I know I have this event coming out and I want to make sure or I'm speaking. I want to make sure that these share, you know, for the next six weeks, mm-hmm. three times a week, you know, without having to go back in and schedule it. Right. Yeah. Cause I have to do that with buffer. I think you have to do that with buffer as well. I don't use um, buffer, but yeah. yeah, there's, there's some that do some of that auto rescheduling, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, buffer Hootsuite. I mean, they're post planner you know, is what I've used um, to do yeah. that before. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you got a lot of, a uh, lot of options there. Um, so overall it's a pretty neat little, uh, neat little tool. You've got, you know, your, your feed, you've got your analytics. Um, it's also kind of neat that you can also see, you know, they show how many new followers you've got. Um, different type, you know, you could break your tweets out by media tweets, which is nice. And they show you the percentage, um, of, uh, tweets. So for example, if it's, you know, if it's up or down and so forth, that's really handy. Um, direct messages are obviously accessible through there as well. Um, and then obviously you can see your profile. So pretty slick little app. Um, it's also nice. You also have a, a queue and you can also create some drafts. So, um, that's nice. You're using that, you can start to Do you notice jump. how all the social media, yeah. like channels, Facebook, Twitter, you know, they're all starting to kind of allow you to filter out different business and media mm-hmm. channels. So, I mean, the companies like IBM's and like the others that have put other influencers or, uh, you know, their team members kind of with the brand hashtag or with the brand, you know, handle, I should say, um, those are the ones I think that they're going to win even more so in the next five, 10 years allowing their team members to kind of have that employee employee uh, engagement with and posting uh, the company information out there. Absolutely. By the way, so one other really cool feature about this dashboard, uh, the Twitter dashboard is if you're going through like the desktop process, and I think this is really a really smart move is that you can put in nicknames, phrases, people, hashtags that are about your business. And then there's also, a section to be able to say, here's what's not related to my business. So I don't have to deal with, you know, people that are going in there and, um, you know, instead of showing like, instead of showing me things that are totally not about my business, I can put all of that stuff in here now, um, to help better define the content that I'm going to start to see. Exactly. So, um, super, super, super handy here. So, um, so let's see, so that's Twitter dashboard. Um, aside from that, I, I don't have anything else today. Uh, except just a quick wrap up and uh i think it was good there was so many exciting things to talk about this week oh especially this was a good week 
every single week always like it's different some weeks it's like really great there's so much to talk about so funny like we always talk about last year after the conference um you know all the social media channels rolled out something new and then this year right after our social media week same thing it was like Mm -hmm. the next day and the day of you know instagram rolls out new features facebook rolls out new features new layout you know Mm -hmm. everything so yeah you know speaking of new layouts facebook i think pages are coming out with new layouts uh very soon um i've seen a few accounts with them not very many but the shopping um, cart too is on uh several of my business pages already mm-hmm. that we've been able to incorporate which is cool with facebook yeah so, so with the shopping cart did you notice that um did you have to have a certain number of fans um mm-hmm. to get that or well i don't know because both of them had over a thousand so maybe but I, it's uh, it's gonna be really, you know, I, I like the direction everything's going. You know, I really think that there's a lot of um, really useful features being added instead of just, you know, putting in these little minor updates. Right. Um, you know, and the key thing is, if you're a business owner, focus on, you know, the big picture of things. Uh, you know, for instance, like Twitter stickers. You know, it's nice to know, but it's not going to be useful for you as a business owner. Um, there's too many other apps that you can use to, you know, to create you know, your own stuff. Stickers. What? I said, yeah, to put some stick add some text on some images, Twitter. Come on, step it up. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Yeah, they need their own app or something. I mean, you would think they would have their own app or Facebook yeah. would have their own app. I mean, but here's the thing focus on the big things like the shopping cart. Yeah. If your goal is, you know, if you're an online business, uh, brick and mortar, um, you need to start, you know, start learning how to add that stuff to your account. Um, you know, don't focus on the little, you know, the little small things. Um, right. That's really not going to help move the needle very much. Or if it does, it's going to be really slow and you're going to feel like you're not going anywhere. Exactly. So, uh, I got to say, this has been a really, a lot of fun. Um, yes, if you want to, if you want to come back, you know, next week or whenever you're totally welcome to, we do Woo-hoo. these. Uh, every Thursday. Um, <laughs> if we switch off, do what? I said, absolutely. You know, if, if we switch off the lab, um, I'll definitely let you know. Um, okay. if, if you, if you also switch off the lab, let me know and uh, kind of see what, uh, you know, what direction. We'll everybody's test going. it out. We'll try out a few things and, and see where it goes. Still Definitely. not ready. I don't want to give up on Blab. I'm so sad. But you know, yeah. I mean, it's long. it's tough because it's. I mean, it's there's a lot. You know, you learn how to use it. You know, all the little tricks now. There's some really cool stuff, and then it's like, well, hey, I got to learn how something else works. But I guess that's innovation for you. Um, but yes. I'll see everybody next week. Um, we have episode uh, was it episode 43, I think. Um, you can subscribe to that one. And then if anybody wants to get on uh, our email list for uh, getting notified about episodes of Social Chatter, you can text uh, 33, let me see, text 33444 to, um, uh, sorry, text Social Chatter to 33444, and that'll get you on the list, and then I'll notify you about, um, you know, a couple of topics, and I'll send you a replay of the previous show. Thank you so much you so for much. having me on, Christian. It's been fun. It was good to see you again. I want to improve my lighting here because like yours looks so much better. <laughs> I have so. a light in front of me. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to get your uh, get some video secrets. Yeah, you want to see it? It's just like a little absolutely. What do we got? A little light right there. Ah, that's very cool. So, okay, so what camera are you using? Are you just is that your laptop, my laptop or? camera? Okay, <laughs> very cool. Well, looks great. Uh, fantastic <laughs> lighting. Uh, by the way, thanks so much again for having me at the conference last week. It was a lot of fun. Uh, everybody who's watching, be sure to go check out uh, Now Marketing Group. Thank you. So this is uh, Jessica. Uh, what were you CEO and founder of Now Marketing Group? Yes. So a uh, great person to know. Um, oh, a lot you. of energy. She's really knowledgeable as well. So thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I hope you guys all have a good holiday weekend and make it safe. Oh, yes. for those of you in the Absolutely. US. Fourth of July, yes. Yeah. And happy social media day. Yes. <laughs> All right. See you, Christian. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.